Hello everyone, it's Noga. I've decided to create a video series documenting how I went from zero gold on Classic Well launch day to currently having a net worth of a quarter million to 300,000, uh, which I expect to grow quite easily to a half million gold a few months after Naturamus releases. I did all this without using any sort of TSM operation or deep TSM understanding. As I looked into it and I decided I didn't really need the functionality. I do use TSM for the ledger uh, and the mailbox. Uh, I prefer it over the standard UI and it allows me to keep track of where my items are spread over my accounts. I'm sure like most of you I have watched the majority of the content available on YouTube and I have to say that I'm quite disappointed with what's out there. The majority of content is either farm here or buy this and you'll become rich. Uh, for the latter content creators, I feel that they are no longer using it as a means to inform and help their followers, but rather they're selling their, you know, items they've already purchased into the strength to offload them that uh, these videos provide in the market. Um, they're releasing these videos so late that they either don't know about the items until the masses learn about them or uh, they have the previously mentioned uh, sinister motives. A little background about myself. Uh, I started playing WoW in vanilla and raided until AQ, not really making any serious gold. Uh, I was quite a bit younger back then. I don't think that I even controlled my play times. Uh, so yeah, I was only able to do, uh, so much with the time I had given for me. I re-rolled on a fresh server with the launch of Wrath of the Lich King, and I was the first person on the server to have the vendor mount. So I had some background to server launches and, you know, making gold early when there's not a whole lot of raw gold around. I started playing private servers after Nostalrius was shut down on Zeth Kerr. Uh, it eventually merged into Light Hope, where I had a modest fortune of around 15,000 gold. I came in a classic with a fair bit of knowledge, however it's quite a bit different than private servers, that some of my gold making ideas have failed pretty spectacularly. Um, this isn't just going to be an invest in this item video series. However, I will be showing all or some of what I'm stockpiling during the video at some point. This video series will hopefully be a little bit deeper as to why you're investing, different types of investing, different ways to get gold, protecting your margins, all kind of small ideas that I've had and used while creating my fortune. However, none of them will really create gold for you by itself, but used in tandem with everything else, it kind of builds upon itself and allows for a larger investment. So each video in the series will deal with a different time frame in Classic. Uh, for this first video series, for the first video I should say, we're going to be talking about uh, pre-launch up until week two. Uh, everything that I kind of did during that time frame. Also, as a small disclaimer, some of these first videos may not include a lot of useful information about how to currently make gold and classic, as they're going to be more a look back and how my thought process went. We're slowly going to catch up to the current game, and uh, at that point, I'll tell you anything that I'm currently doing, uh, if it's different than other phases. Um, However, if Blizzard decides to ever release a new set of classic servers, which I'm pretty confident they'll do, uh, this content will become much more valuable as you'll be able to apply my process from start to finish. So on that note, let's uh, jump into it. Okay, so let's start on day zero. Before I stepped into the world, I had three different plans on how I was going to make my gold uh, during the first couple of weeks. I started leveling this hunter as my first character. It was a pretty good choice, however, 
after seeing the meta of AoE farming and boosting, a mage would have been a much better choice. However, uh, I was going based off the information that I had at the time. I was the second person to hit 60 on Incendius, which ended up being one of the mega servers. So I'm a fairly quick leveler. Uh, I also hit 60 with 300 mining and skinning ready to go. Uh, this was done through a combination of practicing uh, 1 to 15 on the Blizzard stress test as I didn't get beta access as well as taking four days off of work um, combined with a long weekend here in Canada. As you can see, the gear on my character is pretty dismal. Um, most of it's not enchanted. I have greens. It, this really is just a crafting character. Um, my original plan was to do princess runs in Marden for my seed gold. However, due to princess being significantly harder than on private servers, I decided to use my professions and go into Angoro for Devil Soars and Rich Thorium on the center island or mountain uh, to make my early gold. That was my uh, first backup plan and it really was important uh, to have different plans uh, just in case something was to go wrong. I really can't stress how important the first few weeks of a server launch are for making gold. We are currently in between the ZG and AQ patch. And in today's gold, we can make three to 4,000 gold per hour uh, equivalency. The opportunity will never really be there again. Uh, if the servers are relaunched later, players now have uh, a little bit more knowledge and uh, so these strategies will be less effective. However, uh, it'll still be astronomically better than any other gold farm that you can do so far. Um, so day one, the main thing is really just getting ahead of the curve. Uh, being higher level allows you to take advantage of the higher price quest rewards and trash drops uh, that you'll be receiving for, and it opens up tons of opportunities on the auction house. We never really want to stop leveling in the first week to do things like auctions and selling. That's why if you're serious about making gold, you really do need to get a second account. Um, that way you can constantly have a presence on the auction house as well as in trade chat. I really find that a lot of people don't take advantage of trade chat or even world chat. I have a, uh, a macro that uh, I use to spam um, so that I can purchase goods. Uh, this is just right here. That's what it is. Um, what I'm trying to buy currently or you know, willing to buy. Some of it's not an investment. Some of it's for my transmutes that you can see, but uh, that actually kind of works out because it blends in and I don't have people blindly following what I buy. Um, okay. Um, yeah, during leveling, I was also running a Night Elf on my second account via Death Runs to Winter Spring. I would do this during uh, flight paths, boat rides, um, or even mid combat as a hunter, it's fairly easy to uh, just click my macro. You know, it's still there. I no longer even have arrows in my inventory, so it's not lit up, but uh, it's just a pet attack macro that I was able to use and uh, use my other account at the same time. So you might think that I was heading there for the tailoring patterns, which I ultimately did get. However, I was originally doing the run to get to the vendor in Southern Winter Spring that carries Felcloth and Grom's Blood. I figured that uh, with layer hopping and the vendor, I was going to be able to basically print gold 
However, due to the differences between private service and classic, that vendor wasn't available in phase one. So I did end up going to Everlook and started buying runecloth bag patterns. I think it was on day four or five. I didn't really want to tie up too much gold into the patterns because I was worried that layering was going to provide too many of them. This was actually a mistake on my part as the patterns ultimately ended up selling for close to 100 gold on my server. But uh, I still had maybe 25, 30 of them. So it was a significant chunk of gold fairly early in the server once the massive players hit the appropriate level. So by being a higher level, we're able to take advantage of items that your average leveling speed player is coming into. These include restoration potion stacks from people completing the Aldemon chain, right as they need their level 40 mount money, and elemental earth. I had a character sitting in Badlands for weeks, hitting a macro every 20 minutes or so, that I was buying these potions and elementals for a set price. During the first week, we really want to focus on items that we're going to be able to flip in week two or at the latest week three. We don't want to have a lot of gold tied up in items right now. Um, a few examples of this is Elemental Fire, Hydralisk Armor, Warmonger. Um, there are many other items out there, but uh, this is just trying to tell you about the technique, not uh, just a giant list of items. So these are items that within a week will have a large increase in value relative to the other items that we're going to buy in week two. Um, especially at the beginning of the game, you really don't want to look at the gold value or gold price. You want to look at stuff in relative price. Um, uh, there'll be an example that I talk about later on. Um, uh something we want to avoid actually in the first week or even months is buying your epic mount this is probably the largest mistake that i've seen parroted by every single content creator on youtube prior to classics launch i personally didn't buy an epic mount until i had over a hundred thousand gold in value and i still don't have an epic mount on my hunter uh, the only people who might have a case for buying their epic this early are the first five people on a server and then only if they immediately started layer hopping to farm Black Lotus. This is not a video about how to run around and pick flowers and rocks long term for gold. I did it you know, temporarily for the first week, but this is generally who we're making our gold off of, not how we want to make it. Um, even if you're not investing heavily and you're just an amateur gold maker, your epic mount early is a pretty useless purchase. You can say, oh, you need it to get to your drade or your dungeons faster, but you aren't looking at what's really happening. 99% of raids are going to meet up and ride into their raid together. So that means if even one person in your raid has a normal mount, the other 39 people on Epics didn't get to their raid any faster. They just sat around prancing at the finish line waiting for you. Same thing with dungeons. You can't start the dungeon any faster if your tank or healer is still riding over on a 60%. So all you need to do is make sure that you're not the last person in your raid to have an epic mount. It's not going to matter. If you're a serious gold maker and a smart leveler i wouldn't suggest actually buying your normal mount until you're level 60. you should be chain pulling while running and i didn't purchase my normal mount until my mid 50s and i wish that i would have waited a little bit longer uh, so instead let's look at what we could have done with that thousand gold in the first two weeks We'll use Elemental Earth as our example, as there's basically no upper limit to how big your stockpile could be. Um, 
I'm going to talk about stockpile sizes later on too, as that's another really large misconception that I see over on the uh, gold making Discord. Um, okay, so during the first two weeks, you can pick up basically unlimited amounts of elemental earth for 25 silver. Um, it's now selling around four gold on your average server. So if we had taken our thousand gold for the epic mount and invested it in elemental earth instead in week two, we would currently have 16,000 gold. If instead you had invested that thousand gold in items like I suggested earlier in that video, we might have had 2,500 gold at the end of week two, which could then be invested in, into elemental earth with a current value of 40,000 gold. There's almost no player in the game that has gained 40,000 gold of value by having their epic mount two months earlier. You might say, what could I ever do with that much elemental earth? But I just want you to wait until uh, I go through my accounts later on, showing the size of my stockpile. All right, guys, I actually had a lot more stuff that I wanted to talk about in this video, but I didn't realize how long it is getting. So I'm going to quickly show you what I'm stockpiling. Um, as I said, I was going to early in the video. And I'm hoping to have the next video come out tomorrow. Uh, that way I can just kind of keep this thing chugging along. Uh, based on the length we went today, I'm guessing there's going to be four videos based in this series coming out over the next week or so, depending on if I have time. Okay. So this is just uh, for my crafting salts. Um, this is just where I turned them into the rugged hides. Uh, we got strangle kelp that's going to be used for lesser nature pots. Stone scale oil I just used for flask of the titans. Pre-mentioned elemental earth. And here we have some greater shadow protection potions. Um, we're just going to hopefully quickly go through. As you can see here, all my character names are just in a row. Nice and easy. Um, nothing that's going to be taken. That way it is easier for me to do all my mailing. And I actually have a spreadsheet of where I had stuff. Um, it's changed as I play. but uh, So this is my newest uh character with elemental earth that's starting to fill up okay we have life root over here it's going to be used for lesser nature pots we have more elemental earth here um this is my rating character so i really don't have anything here and i have another full elemental earth here um, I think you guys are starting to see a pattern. Um, I used to be a lot more diversified, but as we're getting into the later phases, there are less and less items that are going to drastically increase in price. So as I sell off, I basically just buy more and more of the same stuff. Uh, this is empty storage for right now, it seems. Yeah, the Nether Elemental Earth. Greater Shadow Protection Potions, some regular Nature Potions, and Grave Moss, which is going to be more Shadow Protection Potions. Shadow Protection Potions are one of those things that uh, I really think a lot of goblins are bypassing because they got burned on them with the BWL patch. Um, I really don't know who was telling everyone that they were going to need them, but uh, I guess uh, some people believed it, and that's where we are now. So I think there's a lot of opportunity in uh, Shadow Protection Potions come AQ and uh, Naxxramas. So here we have more Life Root for Nature Protection, Fire Oil, a second Fire Oil, a Nether Elemental Earth, and this is frost resist. Um, these two items here 
Uh, they're basically going to be the stone bark gauntlets and uh, Edelin talismans uh, of Naxxramas. So it's not a bad idea to invest in uh, those right now. Keep this party going. Um, yeah, so all my, all the banks for all these characters are full. They're all three bit, three slots purchased uh, with 14 slaughters. So I believe it's 130 stacks is what uh, this basically works out to per character. Uh, these here, stone bark gauntlets and those uh, talismans. I saw a video that came out a couple weeks ago saying to invest in these. Uh, this is kind of one of the things that made me decide to create a video. And this is one of those things where I was saying that it really was uh, some shifty things, I think, by the content creators um, saying to invest in these items right now. I mean, as you can see, uh, the market value for my server is around 400 gold, region being 500. Um, anyone who really thinks it's a good idea to invest in these at 500 and it's going to go to 750 or, you know, 1,000 gold based on uh, the AQ announcement, I think you're dreaming. Uh, the time to release that video was one week after Classic launched when Dire Mall was coming out. Uh, all these were picked up for between, you know, 10 and 40 gold. And I've been selling for the last three weeks or so now, maybe four weeks. Anywhere between 375 in trade chat and 450 gold on the auction house. Um, so there was significant profit there, but I really don't think buying right now you're going to make a lot of gold. Um, I, sorry about my dog there. Um, another thing that you want to look at uh, is bracers. Not so much mail, but uh, cloth and leather bracers are going to be uh, quite valuable for rogues. There is no craftable or farmable uh, wrist that is leather or cloth. So these are the only option that you have. They're quite rare. Um, again, I would say it's too late to invest in these for the current uh, uh, iteration, but if it was to be relaunched, there's a good... Uh, Way to park some gold. Um, what do we got? We got Fire Bloom. We got more Shadow Pots. Uh, more Strangle Kelp. And here we have uh, Epics for DE. Some AQ patch. Um, it might uh, turn out to be good. It may not. It really depends on uh, uh, what Blizzard decides to go with. But, you know, with everything, it's a gamble. Don't put your whole life savings in it, but, you know, a couple thousand gold, it's no big deal. Okay. Here we got Poison Resistance. Uh, I've crafted these because it saves me a little bit of space on the bruise weed. Um, more Fire Oil. Uh, most of this fire oil that you see it too, it was purchased um, uh, in the first, you know, couple months of Classic. And some of it that I was buying was, you know, five copper a fish. I was paying, you know, five silver a stack. It was really a joke. It was almost free. And I bought a ton of it. I used it for leveling alchemy. Uh, I'll be showing my custom alchemy leveling where I actually make gold um, while leveling up my uh, transmuters. Um, but let's continue. Yeah, more strangle kelp for nature potions and we have more nature resistance over here. A um, couple bracers, like I said. Okay, we got uh, some more frost resist, random resist, and shadow. 
know, eventually I start running out of space on some characters and I don't have enough for a whole nether character, but we got life fruit and uh, strangle kelp, more nature potions. Uh, same kind of deal here. This spotted yellowtail, it's for the AQ opening. I haven't invested in really many of these items. Uh, this is basically it right here, plus the bank is full of the yellowtail. Uh, it's just it's only for my own personal use. Uh, a lot of this stuff, especially the easy stuff, is going to get used up so fast that unless you're turning it in within the first hour, uh, you're not going to be able to do anything with it. Um, more grave moss for shadow pots, and this is uh, kind of half and half investment. Um, this is mainly just because I use uh, 20. Uh, essence of Undeath a day for my transmutes. Uh, that'll be get talked about in another video as well. But uh, there's also some small investment uh, uh, potential here due to Glove and Chance uh, in AQ. But mainly this is just to protect myself. Sorry, my mic cut out there. But this is to protect myself from uh, uh, potential price increases that would then cut into my uh, Essence of Water transmute margins. Okay, again, more Shadow Potions. Uh, as you can see, every single one of these here is Fire Bloom. This is one of those things. It's like Elemental Earth. You probably can't have enough. Uh, it'll get talked about in another video how we're going to go through way more of this than you think. And even here, you know, like TSM is telling me I only have uh, Fire Bloom on two characters. Well, you can see it's clearly at least four. Um, so... That's why the ledger I find is useful, but it's not infallible. Um, we'll keep on going here. Um, again, kind of more AQ mats here. Um, this is my crafter, like I was showing you earlier. Um, this is where the majority of the gold making happens right here. Uh, this is my disenchant or, uh, leather working story crafter. Um, I was using this at the beginning on my first, uh, uh, accounts that basically, you know, like 16 hours a day I was crafting, uh, leather working and vendoring them because there was a small profit. As long as you have multiple accounts, you can basically keep it going forever. And uh, you're going to slowly make gold while the account is just sitting there. Uh, this here, I'm sure if you're on the Netherwind or previous Incendia server, you've seen my name as I spam the hell out of world chat and uh, trade chat with my macro. Uh, hopefully I don't annoy anyone. Seems like we got some gold. It's always nice. And uh, it's also worthwhile to say you should keep um, quite a bit of mats and whatever you're selling on hand. Uh, raid nights, depending on your server, I mean, you can go through quite a few. This is usually what I do. I just leave stuff uh, that's overflow. I can't fit into my bag, so I'll just let it sit uh, in my uh, mailbox. And this is basically... A character I only keep stuff on that's getting sold uh, this week. Um, what else do we got? Again, these are, you know, there's some of the talismans here. Some more stone barks here. Um, waters. Transmute items. Glass. Um, yeah. Uh, what else do we got? We got some elemental waters and essence of living essence. Again, I haven't gone too heavy on these. Um, just because I really don't think that there's that much upside potential. I could be wrong. You know, as you can see, I've made, you know, quite a few mistakes uh, while I've been playing. So no guarantees. 
And now for the final set of characters and I can let you get out of here because I'm sure I am starting to drone on. Again, we got more frost resistance here, nature resistance, we got to sell. I've started to sell nature resistance. Uh, I expect to pick, uh, have it pick up quite a bit uh, uh, on the release day or not release day, the announcement day. And then here we got more fire bloom, more greater shadow potions, um, more life root, more just kind of more of the same. But uh, yeah, so that's my account or counts, I should say. And uh, that's what I'm currently investing in. I'm sure there are some items that are in banks only, so you can't see. It's not like I've hidden anything purposely, but uh, uh, even on my Crafting Hunter, I think I have uh, 250 or 300 uh, Black Lotus currently. Um, yep, yeah, so I'm going to leave it here. And hopefully tomorrow I will have another video out for you guys with more ideas uh, about how to make gold. I won't be going through my inventory again, obviously. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, maybe week three up until two months. Uh, depends. We'll see where we are uh, um, at what time we get to the video.